Hello guys and welcome back to another video. We are back working on the BMW 130i today and we're going to be swapping out the brakes. So however long since I got the car, the brakes really have been quite shocking. It's been one of them things that's really let the car down. Now I did do a brake fluid flush and that did improve it somewhat but yeah I have a, I have a feeling that the original discs and pads are pretty shot so we're actually going to be swapping them all out today now i've actually been in contact with a company called a to z car parts they are located in wakefield here in the uk they have a massive wide variety of car parts so we'll leave their links down in the description box below so go check them out if you are interested but they have been kind enough to supply me with their kinetics brake disc so this is obviously the front and look how huge this thing is, this is the rear disc, and then they've supplied me with some Techstar pads. Now I'm gonna be completely honest, when I was recommended Techstar pads and Kinetics discs for my 130i, I was a little bit dubious because I've never really heard of those companies before, but after doing some research, I actually found out that Techstar are one of the OEM suppliers when it comes to BMW brakes. So you may actually find that if you have OEM you know brake discs or brake pads uh you know on your bmw then they may actually already say techstar on them they may have the bmw stamp but they may be you know made by techstar um so yeah so that that's put a lot of uh, confidence in the pads for me obviously the discs um we will find out once we have them installed just how good they are and uh, i'm sure i'll keep you guys updated throughout the uh throughout this build and uh you know tell you how well they how well they hold up um, but yeah, they really do look the part and uh, I'm sure they will be a damn sight better You know over what I have on at the moment um, But yeah without further ado, I think we'll just get outside and let's get cracking today Okay, and so I thought it would actually be a good idea just to show you what kind of state the original Brakes are in if you have a lot. This is obviously the rear now the disc itself doesn't actually have much of a lip on it does have a little bit of one, but it's not too excessive but if you have a look at the disc it really doesn't look like it's in too good of a shape now the pads look like they do have a, a little bit of meat on they're not too worn but yeah that disc just looks yeah pretty shot to me let's take a look at the other side yeah obviously ignore the rust but again a lot of lines going around that a lot of grooves in it so yeah it really doesn't look like in the best condition take a look at the front front don't look as bad again still a lot of meat left on the pads and the other side is a similar story as well so i think once we get the calipers off we'll uh, have a good look at things and then uh yeah see the real cause to why our brakes are poor Now that we have the wheel off then, the first thing I like to do is move any brake pad wear sensors out of the way. Obviously our brake pad wear sensors have not triggered so they're still good to reuse again. So they're usually held in by the bleed nipple. So let's pop that off. As you can see that's actually just pulled out of the pad nice and easy. I'm just going to tuck it up there out of the way because that'll be good to use on the new pads. Next thing I'm going to do then is remove the caliper securing clip. You can usually do this by hand. If you just press it in, there you go. That just removes like so. And then next thing I need to do is remove the slider bolts, which are just hidden by these caps. So if you just go ahead and pop these off. There you go. That's what they look like. And then there should be a 7mm allen bolt that you need to remove yeah and these should be pretty tight I've never seen some caliper slide bolts as tight as these it's like they've used no grease and tightened them up with an impact wrench that's how tight they were they were coming out so so slowly but 
I've managed to get them the majority of the way out before I take them fully out. I'm actually going to compress the piston back in so it's flush with the caliper. So I have a G clamp on here and what I've actually done is taken the cap off the brake fluid reservoir just to allow the pressure to go back up in here. Obviously this is going to rise slightly when I compress that in. But once I've done that, the caliper should then fall off. And now that the piston is compressed back into the caliper, I can actually remove the slide bolts all of the way now. There we go. Caliper should now pull off. There we are. And go ahead and remove the pad from the caliper. There we are. I can just put this to one side. I don't want to leave it hanging. Obviously it's putting stress on the actual brake line then, so I'm gonna try and hook it up somewhere. Okay, so I've just left the caliper supported by this box here. Now, just taking a look at the original brake hose, looks like we may have to swap these out sometime soon as well, because there is some fine cracks along it, which is not good. But yeah, I'm gonna have to be swapping that out maybe for some braided hoses at a later date but let's get on to removing the caliper bracket and then obviously the disc as well so to remove the caliper bracket itself there's just two 60 millimeter bolts on the back now as you can see they're already loose but these weren't actually near nowhere near as hard as the slide bolts were to remove they were just on another level these remove fairly easy with a breaker bar There we go, that's the bracket off. I see two bolts removed. And now when it comes to removing the disc, there is just a, in our case, six millimeter little screw holding the disc onto the hub. I have to be very careful not to round this because it can be a big pain. There we go, this one's not done up tight at all. So that's that removed and now the disc should just pull off. She says, no, that's right, I have the handbrake on, so I need to release the handbrake, and then this should come off then. That is damn stuck. Finally. We got it off. That is honestly the hardest brake disc that I've ever had to remove. I must have hit it with this mallet maybe like, I don't know, 300 times. Even got a little bit desperate and used the uh, good old WD-40. Damn, this had rusted good on there. I just hope the others are not as hard as this to remove. But as you can see, there is no grease on here whatsoever. I really do not see why people skimp out and do not put grease on the hub when installing new brake discs. So next thing I'm gonna do then is give this whole area a good clean up with some brake cleaner and then obviously grease the hubs. I'm not gonna be making these as difficult to remove next time. And as you can see, I've not been shy with the copper grease. That is fully greased up now. I can go ahead and install the new brake disc. And then just secure that in place with the screw, which I've actually put a little bit of copper grease on as well. And then just go ahead and tighten that up. There you go, haven't got to go too crazy. And now what I've done is actually gave the caliper bracket a good clean up with a wire brush and some brake cleaner. So this is now 
ready to be reinstalled with those two 16 millimeter bolts and now that the caliper bracket is reinstalled with the two 16 millimeter bolts torqued down it's now time to start installing the pads the first of which i can just slot into the bracket itself and as you can see i've actually applied some uh, anti-seize as well just to keep things moving nicely and now it's time to install the rear pad into the caliper itself and then the caliper can be mounted to the bracket as you can see the pad is in the caliper and now this should just slide over now there we go and now we just got to put the slide bolts back in and then the clip at the front and for the slide bolts I actually have some special red grease which obviously I'm going to cover these in and then slide them into the caliper and now that I've tightened the slider bolts down the two caps can go back on and so can the securing clip go and now it's just the brake pad wear sensor so that goes tucks into the bleed nipple and then this inserts into the rear brake pad and that's firmly in there now job done and with this rear side one done it's time to put the wheel back on and get this thing on the ground Okay then, so there is one of the rears done. I'm actually going to go ahead and do the exact same on the other side. Obviously I'm not going to show you because it's just the exact same minus the brake pad wear sensor on this side. And then once this is done, we'll move on to do the fronts. Okay then, so that is the other rear done. That's both of the rears done now. All that's left to do is the fronts, of course. So now we are on to the front then. It's pretty much the same as the rear. There's only a few slight differences. Obviously we remove the securing clip at the front just the same. Just push that ac across and it should pop out like so. And then because this side is the uh, pad wear sensor side you can actually pull it out off the brake pad and then unhook it from the bleed nipple and then we can just put that over to one side and then of course we need to pop the caps off the back of the slide bolts yep and the fronts are a lot easier than the rears And again, like the rears, I'm going to use the G clamp just to compress the piston. There we go. And then I can fully undo both the slide pins. And this should pull off. There we go. Now then what I've done to make it easier to remove the bolts for the caliper bracket, I've just turned the wheel outwards so it means I can get a breaker bar or a torque wrench in our case onto the bolts. These bolts are actually bigger, these are 18 millimeters, obviously the rears are 16. But I'm going to break these loose now. Ok, 
Okay, so there we go, that's the two 18mm bolts. That's the caliper bracket removed. Now, we've just got the possibly difficult task of removing the disc. Obviously we just need to remove the six millimeter Allen screw first. Hopefully it's not too tight. This way. Now this screw is actually in here pretty tight, so pretty difficult to get with the Allen key. Now in hindsight, I probably should have taken this off with the caliper and the pad still on. Obviously I could have just hold, you know, push the brakes and then just removed it. But I'm just gonna go at it with the impact. Obviously, I'm gonna be careful not to round it off. Well, we managed to get the disc off. You managed to get the screw removed in the end. But we did actually have to drill it out. I do not know why people insist on screwing these in so tight it's literally just to hold the disc in place while the wheel is off that's the only reason this is not responsible for holding the disc to the hub the wheel itself and the wheel bolts hold the disc to the hub so i need a new one of these now what i've done is i drilled inside got progressively bigger and um and then I eventually was able to tap a seven millimeter Allen socket in and then eventually just came out then. But yeah, we're gonna need a new one of these. But now it's pretty much the same as you saw on the rear. So give the hub a good clean up, remove any debris, give it a uh, good spray with the brake cleaner and then I'll uh, grease all this up, put the new disc on and uh, and then install the caliper bracket, put the new pads into the caliper and then install the caliper. I'm just going to go ahead and reuse the original brake disc screw for now. Obviously, it still works, um, but then at a later date, I'll just uh, just replace it. Like I said, it doesn't really do a whole lot. It literally just holds a disc in place while you have the uh, wheel off. It's not like it's a very critical part. Um, but yeah, you could just do what I just done then with the wheel bolts to hold it in place if you want. But yeah, that's the uh, one of the front discs on. Now I can uh, start reassembling the bracket. I'm going to give this a clean up first, and then uh, reinstall it with the two um, 18 millimeter bolts. There we go. It's the caliper bracket reinstalled, torqued down. Now we can get started on the pads. Okay, so there's the front pad in the caliper bracket already with the anti-seize on. And there is the back pad as well in the caliper with the anti-seize on. And now I'm just gonna slide this in. There we go. Perfect. Just need to reinstall the caliper slide pins and then obviously the securing clip at the front. And there we go then, that is this side done. All I've got to do is put the wheel back on. Almost forgot, before I put the wheel back on, I need to plug the brake pad wear sensor back in as well. There we go. And with this wheel back on, I've actually also went ahead and done the same on this side as well. Now the car is back on the ground of course, just need to make sure I torque all four wheels down now.
Okay, and so that is all of the wheels torqued back up. Now, obviously, because the discs themselves are coated to prevent rusting, obviously, this part will remain coated, but the face of the disc, that will come off, obviously, when I, you know, start braking. Um, so I'm gonna go take it for a test drive now, just to make sure everything is working as it should, and to uh, bed the brakes in a little bit, and obviously get that coating off the face of the discs. Okay, so I just got back from the test drive then, and everything seems to be working as it should. You know, the pads seem to be wearing evenly on the discs. There's no squeals or anything like that. Um, I've checked to see if there's any uh, leaks of the brake fluid, and there isn't. Um, so yeah, we should be all good to be honest. You know, it is gonna take, um, you know, probably a good couple of hundred miles to bed them in um, properly. Um, but I just wanted to take it for a little test drive then just to get you know the majority of the coating on because until you get all of that on you're really not getting proper you know pad on disc contact um, so yeah that's off now the car is now uh, good to drive but like I said it's probably going to take you know a couple of hundred miles or so to properly bed the discs and pads in and that's when I'll notice um, the biggest difference at the moment it's a little bit you know hard to say it's a little bit um I guess floaty you know so it it's not like I'm not getting the sharp biting point at the moment um, which is what I'm really after um, but yeah like I said give it a couple of hundred miles and I'm sure um, we'll be at that point uh, I think the next thing to do will be the um, braided uh, steel uh, brake hoses and I'll probably like do an upgrade I'll do another full um, fluid flush as well with the upgraded 5.1 uh, dot 5.1 fluid and um, yeah I think that should make the world a difference as well obviously I've done that on my E60 and it made a good a good difference so I think that is next for the braking system um, but yeah I just want to thank all of you guys for watching I want to say a massive thank you to A to Z car parts up in Wakefield you know without them this video would not have been possible um, so if you are interested uh, I will leave their links in the description box below. Go check them out. You know, they have a wide range of uh, car parts at a very, very good price as well. So if you're in the market, you need to purchase some car parts. It's worth going over there and checking these guys out. But yeah, I really want to thank you guys for watching. Please give this video a like, leave a comment down below, subscribe if you have not already done so. And I will see you all in that next one.